What's going on everybody, it's Dilmer and welcome. So in today's video, I'd like to share my excitement and knowledge after reviewing the new Unity XRI 2.4 and 2.5, which are now available and both provides new and updated super helpful features to developers. Well, to start off, let me give you a sneak peek of the coolest top five features before we jump into the handsome part. The first one is the XR Interactor Line Visual, which was updated to bend towards selected objects by default. This helps with making object selection a lot more natural for different users. The new XR Transform Stabilizer component was also added to remove or reduce the post jitter that some of us experience, and also makes it more user-friendly when users also have to deal with rays during object selection. The XR Input Modality Manager was also added and it handles toggling between hands and controllers based on which one is active or not. Next, we have the new Climb Locomotion Provider, which I'm really excited about. And this one is included in one of the demos that they provide and it helps you with creations of ladders, monkey bars, climbing walls, and so on. Last one, which I think is worthy of a mention is the XR Gaze and Aim Assistant. This one is very, very cool, and I'm really excited to show you more about how race and eye tracking can help you in enhancing your experiences. Here is the stabilized component, and then the XR Transform Stabilizer takes an actual controller and also a name target object, which in this case is going to be the Ray Interactor. All right, so as soon as I launch this, you're gonna notice how smooth the actual Ray is. I can move it really fast and I don't know, everything just feels so smooth. And if you can't really tell by looking at this video, trust me that it is really, really nice. There's also some curvature added to the actual lines as well. You can see how they curve. If I were to touch this component here with the ray, it's going to snap right to the actual circle. You can also do that with this other one and you can see that the line just makes it more user-friendly. We can also grab these components in here and then you know, move them around. These are some of the ones that you can actually resize if I wanted to grab it. Actually, it's one of these ones. If I wanted to grab this one and then resize it with two, and then just grab it and rotate it. So if we go into Unity and you look at the Ray Interactor and we were to go down in here, you're gonna see that we have the Ray Interactor that really didn't change other than we do have a heat detection type, which is a cone cast. And that is a new feature that was added like if we were to get really close in here, you're gonna see that now there's going to be, instead of a line, you can still do the line to do the ray casting and that you can change by just using, doing a ray cast or doing a sphere cast. But the cone cast is going to be, I think in my opinion, it's going to be better when it comes to grabbing objects from the distance, just like Unity suggested and mentioned in their documentation. I think, you know, it's going to allow you to select things that are really far and you can kind of see that because as you know, as the distance goes, this area it's going to basically be wider. And you can also change this setting in here. So if we go down and look at the XR Interactor Line Visual, you're also going to see a couple different properties that were added. The one that I want to focus on is this line band ratio. And this is what you can change to see how much the actual ratio of the bending is going to be applied to the actual line that gets generated. So basically throughout the code, you're gonna see this burst compile and that burst compiler means that it's going to be using the burst compiler to optimize the code during the compilation. There's going to be also a new XR input modality manager and that input modality manager, what it allows you to do, basically if you grab a controller, it's going to, it's going to change and make the controllers active. If you're using hand tracking, then hand tracking it's going to now be the one that is active. So let's go ahead and look at the component here, the XR origin, XR rig. And you're gonna see that there's going to be an XR input modality manager. And there's one for hand tracking and also one for your motion controllers. If you go in here, you're gonna see that we do have a component for our left hand, also for the right hand, and also the right and left controller. So if we were to go back in here to our XR origin, XR rig, this is basically taking care of the toggling. All right, guys, you can see that my hands are currently active. So as soon as I grab my controllers, bring them here into the field of view and press a button, they are going to be now showing. So I'm gonna bring them back down and then have my hands in front of me. You can see that now hands are the ones that are active. I can grab, you know, different objects. Another cool feature that was also added, I don't know if you can notice, but within my fingers, there is 
a little bit of coloring showing. So if I were to grab some of these objects, you're gonna see that now we have kind of like a blue, a bluish color, light color, and then going darker blue as we get to the tip of my thumb. Now we have this really cool climbing wall. There's also a ladder that we can climb to. And that's what I wanna show you because that is part of the climb locomotion provider. So if we were to look at that, you can actually go and look at some of those changes by looking and expanding. So here's the ladder and these different components, if I were to select one of these different steps, you're gonna see that they have this climbable component, which is like climb interactable. And there's also going to be a climb provider that was also added. So the XR interaction setup, that's probably where they put it. And then if you look at the XR origin and then locomotion system, they have things organized a little bit different than I normally do. But if you go under the locomotion system, there's, you know, turn locomotion, move locomotion, grab move, teleportation, and then also the climb, the climb provider, which is a new locomotion provider that was added. You can look at the system in here and also the different settings. Right now, it allows free X movement, free Y movement, and you can also set some of these settings on the actual interactable. So if I were to look at, for instance, this one right here, and we look at the actual interactable, you're gonna see that we have, most of these components are basic, basically inherit from the interactable itself. But if you look at the climb configuration, you can you know designate the climb provider. In this case, it's not really needed because it'll find it automatically which ones are going to be the handles that's gonna be the parent that is going to contain all different handles that we can basically use to climb. And also the filter interaction by distance, max interaction by distance. And then this right here is really powerful because this is gonna allow you to move freely on the Y axis, but it's not going to allow you to move on the X axis or, or Z axis. On uh, these ones right here on the wall, I think those are probably set up the same way or maybe not, maybe not because you want to basically be able to move around. And those we can, you know, we can check pretty quickly in here. And I know that are not set up that way because right now the climb settings of a right is not set to anything. So that's going to allow us to basically climb up, climb to the right, climb basically forward if we wanted to do that. And that's because that interactable is set up that way. And that makes sense for a climbing wall. All right guys, so this is the static assets demo that I've shown you before, but we have now a new climb interactable objects area. So I'm gonna be using this button right here on the controller on both of them to be able to climb the ladder. So what you do is you get close to the ladder and they're going to be changing colors and we can basically just climb up and see how easy it is. You can also grab onto the bars to be able to go over there and maybe we just teleport to that area. And you can see now that we were able to climb the ladder pretty fast. I'm gonna go back down and then just go ahead and rotate in here and then maybe I'll teleport right close to the wall. And this one is going to allow you to move in either direction. I can go forward, back, basically in all three axes. And then I can just go up and then basically I can go back to let go of the wall. And if we go back in here, I wanna show you that we cannot go left or right. We can all, only go up and down because of that constraint that was set on the interactable. If we look at the XR socket interactor, which I covered previously, and if you haven't, make sure that you watch the video above, then what this allows you to do is basically grab an object and then add a socket, and that socket is going to basically take the original object position and snap it right into the socket. So there's multiple things that you can do. You can use it for snapping, and now with the new features, you can also use it to scale an object. So Normally the way that you set these things up is by using interactables and also interactors. In this case, a socket is an interactor, which is a little bit different than other things, but you're gonna see how easy it is to set it up. Normally you have an XR socket interactor and that has you know a bunch of different settings and the ones that I normally change are the hover mesh material for the interactor and also the can hover mesh material. That means that if we have an object in place already in the socket and we try to place another one, this is gonna be the material that is going to show. And then this one is going to be the material that is going to show when we can actually use the socket. There's also a hover scale that you can also set. And also the new one that I wanted to show you was the auto scaling features, which you can also set by changing the socket scale mode to either fix 
or you can set it to say a stretch to fit the size of the target socket. In my case, I'm gonna set it to fix, and in this case, I have it set to 1.9, so it's gonna be the size of the original object, and then it's going to multiply it, basically almost double the size, but about 90% of that. So the next thing that I'm gonna do though is I also have other ones in here. This one is not using a scaling, so it's not going to scale. And then this one is just really large. I wanted to scale it three times the size of the original object. All right, so for these sockets, I'm gonna basically use these objects in here. So if I were to grab this and put it in place, this one is one that doesn't have the auto scaling, it's just doing a snapping. And you can see that it changes the size to basically green when I have it selected. And that's because I changed the settings for that socket. Let's go ahead and look at this other socket. This one is going to be large, which is 1.9. So that's almost the size of the, of the socket. So we can play around in here. So and this will be helpful for something like an inventory. Maybe you want to have objects that you can grab from an inventory and you can put back on. There's also going to be a new focus state on all the interactables. So that's going to be helpful because when you select an interactable, the select state and also the focus state are going to be active. And then the focus state is not going to be basically disabled or, or change until you select a new interactable. So that's going to be helpful because if you have an object that you want to select, and then maybe you want to have a menu pop up and apply different settings to that object, then that object's still going to have the focus state that you can use to apply different changes to. So the next thing, if you go to file and then settings, there is also a change on the interaction, XR interaction toolkit settings. So this used to be in its own option in here, right in the pairing. Now it's under the XR plugin management, which makes sense because that's all going to be all within the XR components. Then the next thing that I wanna show you though, before we go in and look at the gaze features, which I'm gonna show you as well, which are really cool, is if you go and also wanna use the simulator for hand tracking, that is something that they added. So let me just go ahead and enable it here and I'll show you how it works. All right, by default, you're gonna have basically the controllers and that's going to work just like it did before. I can basically, hold shift and space and both of them can move. I can hit just shift and then that's going to do the selection on the left controller and I'm basically moving my mouse around to move the actual controller. And then if I do the same thing with space, you can see that that all works, right? So the thing that is new though is if I wanted to use hands, I can just hit H and it's gonna take me now to hands. I can basically hold shift and space and then if I hit the middle mouse button and hold it, I can bring both hands down. So that's not, that's basically very similar to what we had before with controllers. In this case, we're using hands, right? I can basically press a button, I can toggle that, I can activate the toggle button in there, I can if I wanted to. In this case, let's go ahead and try and see if we can do a pinch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and tap, and then if I tap one more time, now the left hand is the one that is selected. I'm gonna tap one more time so that we can get the right hand. I'm also going to zoom in here so you guys can see what's happening better. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap and then cycle through it again. There we go. And if you notice on the bottom left side, there's a poke, there's a pinch, a grab, and I can basically use some of these pretty fine poses. So if I wanted to just do a pinch pose, you can see how that changes. If I wanted to do a uh, Actually, the first one was a poke. This one is going to be a pinch. If I wanted to do a grab, I can I can do a grab, which is really cool. L, I can do a thumb. Basically, if you wanted to do thumbs up, you could do, and just by scrolling on the middle button of the mouse, I can rotate it. Basically, thumbs up will be something like that. And then I can rotate it back. And if I wanna do open, in this case, actually P is going to be for a fist, and then O is going to be for open. So if we go back into an actual poke, which is gonna be N, you can see that now I can you know, I can poke. You will need to add the Oculus eye gaze input adapter. I made a video about this, so you can look at it right above it. But once you add this, it's gonna allow you to get the information from Oculus, from the meta device, right into Unity, it's gonna be required. And then there's also going to be a new component, which is one of the ones that I wanted to cover today, which is the XR gaze assistant is going to take a gaze interactor and also the rays that this aim is going to give us. Basically, it's going to assist us with 
whenever we want to do an object selection, whenever we want to grab an object, and we don't, if we don't have the array within the field of view, then this, this assistant is going to help us with that by using the eye tracking to basically move objects around. All right, guys, so I wanna show you how this one works, right? I'm basically focusing on the objects. I'm looking at the right one, middle one, left one, and then I could select them and grab them with my left controller, which is great, right? What if I wanted to use this new aim assistant, right? So I could basically focus on the middle one and then use the right controller. And then I'm gonna look up, look to the left, look to the right, up, down, up, down, up, down. And I'm not moving anything, I'm just moving my eyes. I'm gonna try to move them in a circle. I'm gonna go ahead and put them right in the middle right there and let go. All right, guys, so those are all the features available in 2.4 and also 2.5. Also, be sure to hit a like because it's gonna help me in telling the YouTube algorithm to get recommended. That way I can reach more people and I can keep bringing you many more videos. Also subscribe if you can, because that's gonna help me also in making this community larger and therefore bringing you a lot more content. If you guys have any questions, drop them below. Thank you very much, guys. Which was updated to Ben Selected to Ben Selected Objects that were updated to so in today's video, I like to show you my ex. <laughs> like the new XR stabilizer, st stabil stabilizer, climbing walls, climbing, climbing walls, climbing or climbing.